Hello everyone! Welcome back to my tasting and review of non-alcoholic wines. If you have not seen my sparkling wine review, please see the link below. For today's installment, we'll be focusing on non-alcoholic white wines. These wines have all been de-alcoholized, and though they don't have the bubbles to hide behind, like sparkling wines, they still lend themselves well to delivering some of the same tasting notes that their alcoholic counterparts have. This brand, Giesen, they actually make alcoholic wine as well. They are from New Zealand, so I'm expecting very classic New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc uh, flavor profile here. It smells like a typical Sauvignon Blanc. That very like grassy, grapefruity nose. You can swirl this one around. This helps to warm up the wine a little bit. You're not really gonna get legs is what people are looking for when they're um, swirling wine. And that's just like indicative of the alcohol content typically. So while this is very tasty, definitely does taste like a Sauvignon Blanc, but you do get a sense that there's something missing. Um, it does taste a little bit watered down. I don't really mind it that much. Obviously, if this was like sparkling, I think that it would help it a little bit. It is nice, but it's very, very subtle. You definitely get those grapefruit notes in there, some, some tropical fruit, but it's pretty, it's a little lackluster. It's a little watered down tasting, but it's good for what it is, I think. A lot of non-alcoholic wines, especially cheaper ones, tend to have like that like baked taste, there's not really much of a finish. It just kind of like ends and it tastes like kind of weird and strange. This doesn't have that thankfully, so it's very pleasant to drink. Very uh, grapefruity, very lots of lime zest, lemon zest. It's enjoyable for sure. Oh, and I wanted to talk about these glasses for a little while. I love them so much. They were sent to me by this shop on Amazon called 1500 degrees Celsius Tabletop. And they're like really nice weight to them. They're very sturdy and they're hand blown and they're just super, super pretty. They have this really nice gold ring on them. So thank you guys for sending them to me. I'll leave a link below with a discount code as well if you're interested in purchasing anything from them. Next up is the Laudis Sauvignon Blanc. This one, oddly, it smells like it's seen some oak, which I'm kind of shocked by. I don't really think any of these have seen the inside of a barrel, but wow. This smells like, like real wine, like it's crazy. Yeah, this is, this is much better than the Giesen actually. It's heavier. It must have a, a tiny bit of residual sugar, but you wouldn't know it. It's very, very dry, but it definitely has like a, a rounder mouth feel. Very citrusy. Definitely still get the grapefruit. It's not as pronounced as it is in the Giesen. This is like a little bit more well-rounded, I'd say. Definitely lemon. There's like a little, there's some minerality happening here. It smells oaky on the nose, but once you taste it, it, it really doesn't have any oak in there. Yeah, this is really, really nice, actually. I, uh, so far, this is my favorite one of the stills. So next up is the first of the two white blends. This is Eins Y Zero Blanc de Blanc. So I've tried their sparkling Riesling and their sparkling Rosé, and now I'm moving on to their still white, which I've also had before and I really enjoyed it. So um, I kind of already know how I'm going to like this one. I couldn't find the exact cepage of what is in here. Cepage is just like another fancier term for the blend of grapes that's in here. Um, but Blanc de Blanc refers to um, it's white wine from white grapes. On the nose, I am getting, it smells like there must be some Riesling in here because I'm definitely getting that like petrol um, on the nose and honeysuckle. Yeah, this is really good. Definitely more aromatic, more floral than both of the Sauvignon Blancs and it definitely has more of a weight to it. So I will say that this definitely has a bit more residual sugar. It's like an imperceptible sweetness, but there is, it is there. And I would definitely think that this has some Riesling in it though. Super aromatic, it's really tasty. It's like honey and citrus and some stone fruit even I'm getting. Very, very tasty. 
definitely recommend this one. Last up in this category is Noel Wines Blanc Burgunder. This is a blend of Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc. And I haven't talked about it, but all of these wines are definitely the same color. They're all that very pale straw yellow. I'm not getting too much on the nose. These Noel Wines are very shy. Um, some pear. This is very tasty. Really, really high acidity. Definitely getting some, some tropical fruit in here. Maybe like... Um, papaya, pineapple, or it could just be stone fruit. It's very peachy. Not as hefty as the Einswein Zero or the uh, the Laudis, but really, really nice. I would really love to drink this with like some oysters or shrimp or something like that. Something like delicate and light. So tough to say on my favorite, there was definitely some hits and misses in this category, but I think the loudest Sauvignon Blanc is probably the favorite one that I've tasted. Would definitely purchase this again. Definitely prefer it to the Gießen. So if you are out there looking for a non-alcoholic Sauvignon Blanc or non-alcoholic white in general, this is definitely a winner for me. That wraps up this segment on non-alcoholic wines. If you're interested in more non-alcoholic options, check out the links below to my Zero Proof Spirits and non-alcoholic beer reviews, as well as my Zero Proof Cocktails playlist. On the next installment, we'll focus on red wines, the hardest group of wines to make a good non-alcoholic version of. I'll explain why in the next video, so be on the lookout for that soon, and I'll see you then. Cheers!